Welcome to Winchester Junction. This is the first in a series of short videos that will look at what might have been for the Mid Hance Railway. In 1972, this was the site of the junction of the line between Alton and here, just to the north of Winchester. This is now an area uh, known as Springvale, and although this is a beautiful setting in rural Hampshire, just to the left of where we're looking now um, is a new modern estate, um, largely I suspect of people who commute into Winchester. And had the line survived, it would probably never have made it to preservation because it would never have closed. I suspect that uh, there was some talk of a new station at Springvale and that station may well have been the, the saving of the line. But quotas had to be made and this line was always going to fight hard to justify its survival. Uh, its problems, I think, are well documented. It was a single track line. Um, would it have made sense to electrify? Well, we can look at the economics separately, but this is just to look at the route. So, where I'm stood is pretty much where the, uh, the, the two lines that diverged from the main line would have converged um, to begin the single track journey towards Ichanabas. There are still traces after all this time. You can see ballast, just. Ah. And there's a Class 66 taking a car train down to uh, Southampton Eastern Docks. Hopefully that's uh, for export and not empty wagons going for import. I suspect it is export. There's a lot of uh, Land Rovers and luxury cars going through Eastern Docks at the moment. So we might just as well pause to watch that go through. direction from the Millbrook Maritime Terminal is a container train heading north <laughs> but we're looking here for something a little older and there's very little left there you can see the um, supports of what would once have been uh, one of the older style telegraph poles telling us we're in the right area. So, this is the track bed, very well used as you can see. I'm now walking towards the east. The old posts guide us quite well, as do one or two other relics that was once here. Dog walkers. Our only company here will be uh, evidence of badgers and foxes, I suspect. And this here is quite remarkable because this very large western hemlock, which cannot be older than uh, 1972, is now very substantial. Let's just walk a little further and just gauge its size. Look at that. Okay, I'll walk a little bit further and then restart the video. Here we are, some hundred meters further on. And here, on the northern side of the old track bed, across the field, and there is the main line. In fact, you can tell how busy it is. That's another. You just see another southbound freight liner train. Of course, in 1972, this would also have been very tranquil, perhaps not quite so lush with vegetation, but the service was relatively infrequent 
and there would have been plenty of time for the uh, birds to call um, and all the various um, rodents and uh, other mammals, reptiles, insects to have gone about their business fairly undisturbed. We're now walking slowly towards what is a very substantial embankment and uh, overbridge um, which signals the uh, edge of Springvale and we'll take a look at that when we get there. Half here as we walk towards the embankment in Springvale is very easy to walk and of course it is still I guess in the ownership of network rail as is most of the route Fortunately, not all, as we shall see. This is half here to the south, of the embankment towards the uh, Springvale Road. So we should now find, as we walk along this way, that the land slowly begins to fall away. And you can see down there, and you can probably hear there's a very strong gale blowing as well. You can still see the boundary posts. Taylor made for the dog walk of spring. It's them it's this path so well trodden. Here you get some idea of the size of the particular earthwork that carries the line over Springvale Lane. And also you can see here that the liability of the landowner, which presumably is Network Rail, has continued for the last what, 40 years, 40 plus years. So somebody has to keep maintaining this so that it's presumably safe and that those trees don't collapse onto the houses below. And safe, of course, for trespassers, which I suppose is technically all of the dog walkers are. You can see the gentleman and his cocker spaniel somewhere ahead there. Just on the other side of this huge earthwork. And I dread to think of the number of back breaking hours that have gone into creating this um, Which did a good job for over a hundred years of course. But now supports Nobody except me, the chap up ahead, and his dog. So I've just turned around to look back to the west, and you can see that the ground is still level. Fairly unencumbered by um, incursions from the last 40 years. But as I swing round back towards the east, we can see that the, uh, the route has been somewhat modified and that uh, I should actually step down off the embankment and onto this path here. And here, about half a mile or so from Winchester Junction, we see the first example of the kind of stupidity that existed after the closure of the lines and this we have to say is not Dr Beeching's doing this is the doings of the Department of Transport after Beeching had uh, taken his peerage and gone So, what we'll see between Winchester Junction and Arlesford, a distance of about eight miles, 
is that large amounts of the original root uh, are still undeveloped or at least not built upon but look back there in the far distance is Winchester Junction and the presence of just two houses has blocked the route totally and I hate to say probably irrevocably where I'm walking now would have been the site of a Springvale station. The ground here is about level with the track bed. Springvale lies that way to the north. Kingsworthy lies that way to the south. And this is a very pleasant but nonetheless developed area. Walking along the track bed gives a full sense of the location. It's actually semi rural. Okay. And so, what have we here? As you look back, There's a definite boundary here. The line continues through there, beyond this rather fierce looking fence. And this is Loveton Lane. The Hampshire Downs beckon. This remarkably low parapet, it's clearly a case of the road being built up, but there, under that uh, chalk debris, is our line. And somewhere, just, just behind those M locks, will be the posts, probably of L and SWR vintage. <laughs> Obliteration. We're going to have to do a little bit of orienteering now because there is a private um, small farm that's been built in the last 40 years.